Problem 132. A 10 centimeter cube of mass 2 kilograms is lubricated with SAE 10 oil at 20 degrees C, which has a viscosity of 0.104 newton seconds per meter squared. It slides down a 10 degree inclined plane at a constant velocity. Estimate the speed of the body if the oil film has a thickness of 1 millimeter and the velocity distribution in the film is linear. So what I've done here is just drawn a sketch of the problem statement. We have a cube, and that cube is sliding down a 10 degree incline, and it is lubricated by some SAE oil underneath it. And we're told that the velocity of this is a constant. So let's first try and jot down all of our givens. So we know that the side of this cube, or the length of it, is 10 centimeters which is equal to 0 0.1 meters. We're also told that the mass of this cube is equal to 2 kilograms. We, of course, have SAE 10 oil, and we know that its viscosity mu is 0 0.104 newton seconds per meter squared. We're told that it's moving at a constant velocity, or the acceleration is equal to 0, right? The velocity of this cube is equal to some constant. So this cube, of course, is falling down at some constant velocity. And we're asked to determine what that velocity is, assuming that the thickness of the oil is one millimeter, which, of course, is equal to 0 0.001 meters, and that the velocity distribution is linear. So the first thing that I'm going to want to do to try and solve this problem is to draw a free body diagram. And so I have this cube, and it is traveling at some constant velocity, v cube. And the forces that are acting on it are there's some weight that this cube has. We'll just call that W. There is a normal force that the wall places onto the cube. And there's also some shear stress that's acting between the liquid, in this case the oil, and the block itself. And that's going to be opposing its motion. And we'll call that the force due to the shear stress, or F sub S. Now, the one thing I'm going to do to make my life a bit easier is I'm going to set my coordinate system in such a way where the y-axis is perpendicular to the wall and the x-axis is parallel to the wall. And so the beauty of doing that is if I want to find the velocity of the cube, now that velocity is purely in the x-direction. And so all I would need to do is sum the forces in that x-direction and set them equal to 0, f equals ma, and if the, and if the acceleration is equal to 0, then the sum of the forces has to equal to 0. And so the two forces are the reason the cube is traveling down at all is because of its weight, and that is being opposed by the force due to the shear stress. And so we just need to then take the component of the weight in the x direction, and so I just have to recognize that the component in the x direction is going to be modified by this angle here, which is equal to the 10 degrees. And so I have the weight force in the x direction, and that's being opposed by the frictional force, or the force due to the shear stress, in the opposite direction. And these two things added together have to give me zero. Now as an aside, let's go ahead and just figure out what the component of the weight force is in the x direction. And so I will draw my triangle that I have. I have the weight force acting down, and I decompose that into a component in the x direction and a component in the y direction. And I recognize that this angle here is 10 degrees. And so I can simply say that the sine of 10 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is Wx, over the hypotenuse, which is just the weight vector itself. And so I find out that the component of the weight in the x direction is just equal to the weight times the sine of 10 degrees. And the other thing I have to recognize is that the force due to the shear stress is going to be 
the shear stress tau yx times a sub w, where a sub w is referred to as the wetted surface, which is just going to be the area of interaction between the liquid and the cube, which is going to be that bottom face. So let's continue by determining what that force due to the shear stress is, F sub s. Well, we said that's equal to the shear stress tau multiplied by that wetted area. And so in order to make this usable, I need to understand how to calculate the shear stress based on the velocity gradient. And so we just have to recognize that the shear stress tau is equal to the viscosity times the velocity gradient. In this case, it would be du dy. So here's the shear stress, and I multiply that by the wetted area. Well, in order to determine what that velocity gradient is, let's go ahead and draw a picture. And what I want to do is I'm going to blow up this region underneath the cube. So I have the bottom face of my cube, and I have a portion of the solid slanted wall. And I know, or I'm told, to assume that the velocity distribution between these two points is linear. And so I know the no-slip boundary condition tells me that the velocity of the fluid has to be the same as the velocity of the surface. Well, the inclined surface is, doesn't have any velocity, so its velocity is zero. And if I draw the distribution along this dashed line, or how the velocity changes in the y direction, well, it starts out at zero, but it doesn't end at zero. It has to end at whatever the velocity is of the cube. And again, that's because of my no-slip boundary condition. And so if the velocity gradient is assumed to be linear between them. I connect those with a straight line. And here we have now shown the velocity distribution within the SAE oil. Well, the one thing I note is that the velocity gradient is just the slope of this line. And the slope of a line is just equal to some constant. And therefore, the derivative is just equal to a single number, a constant, and that constant can be calculated by just figuring out the slope. Or in other words, the derivative, du dy, is just equal to the change in u over the change in y. And again, that is only true if it is a linear distribution, which we have here. So now I just have to calculate the change in the velocity. And so if I look at the velocity at the top, I have to recognize that that distance in the y direction is just equal to the thickness, okay? And so the velocity at that point is going to be equal to v cube minus the initial, and the initial velocity at the bottom is equal to zero. And divide that by the change in height. Well, at the position of the cube, the value of y there is just going to be whatever the thickness is of the film minus its initial value, and the, the y value at the inclined plane is also equal to zero. So now I can come back and figure out the shear stress, and that's just going to be mu times du dy, but that is just equal to the velocity of the cube divided by the thickness of the oil layer, and again times the wetted area. Okay, so now that I understand that force, I can come back to the some of the forces in the x direction equal to zero. And again, that was the weight force in the x direction minus the force due to the shear stress has to equal zero. And we saw that the weight times the sine of 10 degrees was equal to the force in the x direction. Now I have minus the viscosity times the velocity of the cube divided by the thickness of the oil layer times the wetted surface of the cube, and all of this has to equal zero. Well, the weight, of course, is just equal to the mass of the cube times the acceleration due to gravity. I'll times that, again, by the sine of 10 degrees minus the viscosity mu, v cube over the thickness times the wetted area equals zero. And now this is going to give me the mass was equal to two kilograms 
multiplied by g, which is 9.81, times the sine of 10 degrees, minus the viscosity, which we were given as 0 0.104, times the velocity of the cube, divided by the thickness, which was 0 0.001, multiplied by the wetted area. And the wetted area is just going to be the bottom face, and since this is a cube, it's going to be the 0.1 times 0.1. And all of this has to equal zero from my equation. And so you see here, I have one equation, one unknown, and I can go ahead and solve for the velocity of the cube, and it winds up becoming 3.28 meters per second.